Hi everybody, it's Russell Markham here from VectVest. Uh, what I've done here is I've actually created another recording of this. Unfortunately, the GoToWebinar recording didn't work out, but it doesn't matter. You get another take of it. So what I've done here is I've just recorded this directly after the live event. All right, so here we go. So if it differs slightly, don't worry. It's it's exact same uh, content. All right, so just a, a different take on the recording as such. Uh, disclaimer statement, please note our disclaimer statement there, our license numbers, and you can check us out per our financial services guide. Please note, general advice only today. I cannot give you personal advice. Please speak to a financial advisor for any personal advice. Past performance, no guarantee of future results. Forecasts and backtests used or discussed in this presentation today are intended as a guide only, and actual results may be affected by known or unknown risks and uncertainties, and therefore may differ materially from the results ultimately achieved. All right, with that said, let's uh, jump into the presentation. All right, so uh, it, it, at least uh, the VectVest. In fact, before I do so, before I do so, uh, let's just cover the key topic uh, talked about uh, items here that we're going to talk about. So first and foremost, the most important part of this webcast today, it's all about dividend yield. So, you know, what is a company paying out as a percentage of its current share price? So the yield here would simply just be the dollars and cents being paid out divided by the share price times 100. In addition, we're also looking at dividend safety. It's an indicator of the assurance that regular cash dividends will be declared and paid at current or higher rates for the foreseeable future. So we're going to show you an indicator today in VectVest called dividend safety. It's on a scale of 0 to 99. And we want that dividend safety score to be 50 or higher. Okay. And then what we're going to do here is we're also going to then make sure that if a dividend safety score is below 50, that we pay special attention to the company and remove it if it doesn't stack up. All right. So it's, it's going to be a check and balance. No point having a good dividend yield. All right. So something that's paying, let's say, 5 or 6% if the track record behind that company is not good. So companies that are consistently paying a reliable dividend will get a high dividend safety score. So you might get a company that pays, you know, 6% last year, 5% the year before, 6% the year prior, 5.8% the year prior to that, et cetera, et cetera. It's consistent, right? As opposed to a company that's paying, let's say, 8% this year and last year was 0%, and the year before that was 14%. And the year prior to that was 2%, and the year before that was 0 and the year prior to that was 0 again. There's no point because you're getting a very unreliable uh, a, a track record. So we want to make sure that our track record is reliable. Okay, so uh, we want to, want to pick on those dividend safeties of 50 or better. We're also going to look at an indicator called dividend growth. It's a forecasted annual growth rate of a company's dividend based on historical dividend payments and dividend predictability. It's a subtle yet important indicator of a company's financial performance. It also provides some insight into the board's outlook and the company's ability to increase earnings. So we want to make sure that our companies have positive dividend growth, not negative dividend growth. You know, why would a company look to be reducing its dividends? That would be of concern to us. We also then want to put it all together into one master indicator being yield, safety and growth. We want to find companies that have a good dividend yield a good dividend safety and a good dividend growth. It's on a scale of zero to two. So uh, the higher above one, the better. The better the combination of yield, safety and growth. All right, with that said, let's jump into VectVest. I'm going to show you this here now. Uh, and this is really special what I'm going to bring up and share with you today. All right, so first and foremost, here we are for Australia. And what I've done here is I've built this search all right so if you're new to VectVest, it's really easy to build these searches once you get to grips with the program you can build all these great searches and if you're an existing subscriber then no doubt you'll be very good at building this already so all i've done just a new search you don't need to do anything other than simply click and point and enter in a couple of values i've said let's go and look at all the australian stocks out there and let's make sure that the dividend yield is four percent or better so to build this, I just simply went to this tool called UniSearch. I clicked on here, I went where it notes stocks. I clicked on dividend and I said dividend yield. And then I said must be greater than or equal to. And then I just put in a value 
4%. So that's how I built the first line, for example. So it's just simply a matter of clicking and pointing. Second line here, I simply went into VectorVest. I said stocks, capital appreciation, the earnings per share. So the earnings, if a company has rising earnings, so here Delta, then we know on average a rising earning is going to lead to a rising share price, which in turn is going to lead to rising dividends. So over the last 52 weeks, make sure it's greater than or equal to 15% or better. That's all I did there on the Delta. Now again, don't get caught up in terms of the, the finer detail of you know, how you have to click and point. Once you get into VectorVest and you take out a trial, it's really easy to do. It's just a matter of just being aware of uh, these techniques. And then it's, it's nice and straightforward to do. So I've just said, find me earnings growing by at least 15% or better over the last 52 weeks. Find me a share price that's at least a dollar or better. Find me that safety on the scale of 0 to 99. So a good safety track record of 50 or better. And make sure that you find me both interim and final franking credits must equal 100%. All right. So again, you know, you can take a screenshot of this or refer the recording to our team. And that can help you build this exactly as I've just built it here. It's quick and easy to do. Once you've built it, you can save it. And then it's yours forever. You don't have to worry about ever replicating this ever again. All right, this is just one way I'm doing it, okay? And straight away, VectorVest will return the stocks for me. And so in this particular case, I said to VectorVest, show me the top 20. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the top 20, select them all, right click. There might not be 20 in total, but let's see what we've got here. Adds watch list. And I've generated a watch list in VectorVest already called dividend payers greater than 4%. And again, you know, once you get into VectorVest, you can create a new group. That, that, that's to create a folder if you wish. And once you create the folder, you select and then create a watch list within, within the group. All right. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just going to simply move those stocks into that watch list. So we've run using the criteria here. And now we're going to quarantine that off into a, a list from which we're going to investigate further. So to give you an example, let's work through before we go and look at the list. Let's pick on the first one. So we've got like a podium here. All right, so we're going to have a look here. We go over here. We go, okay, over the last 52 weeks, it's grown its earnings by a whopping 50%. Great. Uh, interim and final franking credits are 100%. So we're feeling pretty good. We come across over here and we look at the dividends and we go, look, wow, dividend of 8%. Safety of 54. That stacks up. Looking to grow its dividends by 17% or more. The good Y member YSG yield safety and growth. The higher above one, the better. It's very high at 1.42. A score of 1.4 or higher is excellent. And both the interim and final franking credits are fully franked. Ah, that's what I you know, that's what I'm looking for. Well, let's look at the graph. All right, so we put on earnings onto the graph here, and I'll change the style, some functionality you got in VectVest. Here we go. And I'll make that an area graph. All right, so this is our 12-month a leading forecast earnings so a bit of a surge in earnings but then it's sort of corrected again but the, the general trend has been up it looked like it was going to take off on the earnings but it's recalibrated back down again still very very good consistent rising earnings on average rising share price put on the dividends all right change the style here so when you have a rising set of earnings surprise surprise company makes more money they're more likely to pay out dividends right so rising earnings rising dividends and then let's put on the yield the dividend yield here we go so if you've got a, a great dividend yield here it is too right so rising earnings rising yield all being driven by the rising earnings which in turn drives the share price that's exactly what we're looking for so you know can we continue to find these stocks and you know so you look at the next one Pulbara here graph that one up here all right you look at this one here and go oh look big uplift in the in the um in the yield 6.31 that's because the share price is falling so the dividends are holding steady and tweaking up slightly but the share price is falling so the the dividends being paid relative as a percentage of the share price you can see the yield is coming up but look at this the earnings are coming off so although it meets some very strict criteria, this one would be one that I'd give a miss right now. Okay, so I jump into the next one. All right, graph that one. 
It was a matter of then just going through and picking out the ones that are jumping out. Now, this one here has been holding up pretty well. Big uplift in the earnings. Share price here is starting to, to move up again. Not the smoothest left to right price pattern, but it's holding steady and that yield is sitting at, at 6%. So it's just a matter of going through and tweaking your selection. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the watch list. So we selected them all and I then just simply right clicked and added them to a, a given watch list. All right, so add to watch list. I clicked on the first one, I held my shift key down, went to the last one, right click and then added to watch list. So going over to the watch list now, here we are, different pairs. This is the one we've quarantined. So straight away, I see two stocks that have a sell rating next to them. So what that means, it tells me that uh, there have been a bit of a breakdown in the price. And look at that. There's Pulbara, sell rated. Price is falling. All right. That's what's getting that sell rating lining up. Price here is falling. So although they're good from a dividend perspective, I'm not going to wait around to find out why they're falling. I can always come back and revisit. So straight away, I've removed those two out. I'm down to nine. I'm going to come and look at the, the average of the watch list down here. So I right click. I'm going to view the watch list average. Have a bit of a peek. Ah, oh, okay. Great set of earnings. Rising dividends. Great dividend yield. Wow. There's not really much not to like here. Look at this. Superb. A little bit of a tail here, but uh, on average, you know, a few pullbacks here and there. But this is uh, phenomenal. Uh, and over the last year. Uh, it's up, it's gone from what, 380 to five, just over $5, so about 25% uh, uplift in price. Very nice. All right, that's what I'm looking for. But can I make it better? All right, can I make it better? So what I do here is I come in and I go, okay, uh, what companies are falling away in price? We've identified two. We're going to sort it by this indicator called RT, relative timing. It's looking at short-term price momentum. So in here, I can come in here and go, okay, well, these two have an RT below one. All right, so the momentum is falling away. So in this particular case here, RT below one, you can see here the price is falling away. All right, so the technicals have been under pressure. Technicals under pressure, price falling away. So these two here are, look like they're dragging down the average. So I'll remove them. So we're down to seven. Let's have a look. Look at the average watch list again. Okay, RT is above one now. That's good. Yep, and we're seeing the, the momentum starting to pick up again. Good, that's what we're after. All right, so here it is. All right, over the last year, let's put it over a year, one year. Good. We're back on track with the momentum picking up again. We can see the earnings as we looked at before. So I'll make that jump out. The earnings are rising. The yield is sitting steady there at about five and a half percent. Okay. And the dividends and dollars and cents being paid out. Let's change the style, make it jump out a bit more. All right, there we go. Great, look at that, up they go. So rising earnings, rising dividends. And the yield there, nice and steady there at 5.74%. Phenomenal, right? That's what I'm after. So there's that list. That's how we did it. That's how quick and easy it is to do effective So uh, to recap, I just simply went to my uni search tool. I put in some basic parameters to begin with. If you're new to effective what you could do is you could just simply start off by saying, fire me dividend yields of 4% or better and leave it at that. And then what VectorVest does is it sorts all of those shares with the best combinations of fundamentals and technicals. So that could just be your starting point. And then as you play more with VectorVest, you go, oh, hang on, I know the earnings are important. So why not build in a parameter to make sure the earnings are rising? And then you, and then you might find a few stocks where, well, oh, hang on, that's like a $0.08 cent or 10 or $0.15 cent stock. I don't want to buy a penny stock. All right, well, what type of stock are you after? Well, a dollar or better. Okay, well, why not screen it out? All right, so price split adjusted greater than or equal to a dollar. All right, what about dividend safety? Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I've got to make sure that the company's reliable and meeting its dividends. All right, why not put in a dividend safety of 50 or better? All right, and then, oh, hang on. Not all these are franking cre credit companies. Let's make sure they're all fully franked. All right, so the interim and the final must be 100%. All right, so you, you can build upon it. Or you can just take what I've got straight away and get straight into it. It's up to you, right? Um, okay, so coming back here, 
This is our watch list average, all right? So we've got a price of 511. We've got a valuation of 636. So they're undervalued on average, these companies. Scrolling across a bit more, we can see here we've got a dividend of 32 cents on average across those companies, which equates to 6.35 yield. So just over 6% dividend yield. We've got a safety score of 57 out of 99. That's a really good score. And these companies are looking to grow their dividends by 10% or more. Wow. Right? So, you know, good yield, good safety, and good upward growth. And they're fully franked. 100% franking credits for both interim and the final. And then I just simply take a, a snapshot of the average and I make sure it stacks up. And I might look at this and go, well, there's a little bit of a tail. But yes, the market and average has been falling. And as the market picks up and starts moving again, you watch those companies with the solid earnings will rise in a rising market. We've seen it time and time again. You know, there might be one or two that go against the trend for a while, but on average, if you can pick on those companies, the rising set of earnings, rising earnings, rising share prices in rising markets. All right, so, and we can see the yield there at, at 5.74. And we can see it's been a fairly consistent yield over the last two years here. So hence the higher dividend safety score uh, that we've got remember remember the oop, i'll push ok on that remember that the safety score there so we had a dividend safety of 57 all right out of 99 so it's solid all right so there we go uh and, and it's up to you to tweak them and you might be looking at this and go okay but you know there's a bit of a tail at the moment well that's okay you know if you then want to shortlist it further you know work out work on the ones that are trending the best currently all right so this one here but you can see as the market's been falling, a few of these companies have been under pressure. And look, when you look at them individually, you might say, well, you know, I'm not too sure. But collectively, these are good companies collectively in terms of the, the overall picture that I'm looking at here. It's collectively, it's, it's a good set. Now, again, I can't advise you personally. Please do speak to your financial advisor as to what's suitable for you. All right. But just looking at the numbers using Vector Best, uh, collectively, I've, I've put together a, a pretty powerful set of dividend paying companies. All right, so there they are. Uh, you might want to jot them down and see what you think. Can you improve upon them? Can you get better profiles? Can you get smoother upward trending left to right stocks on average? Okay, so there it is for Australia. I probably did want it a tad smoother on this iteration here, but on average, it's not bad. And remember, the whole call to being for this presentation is to find the best dividend pays of four percent or better and to find that i need those rising earnings i need those dividends going up and the yield of four percent or better and this is what i'm working with here so here you're getting capital growth you're getting rising dividends which is leading to rising div dividend yield and you're getting a fairly smooth left to right profile okay you could smooth this out further by not having some of those pullbacks. But what is that going to do to your yield? Was, is your yield still going to remain above 4%? All right, so this, these are all the iterations I'm looking at here. And this, based on the analysis so far, is one of the best iterations I can make of a 4% or better yield stock in Australia. So there they are, fully franked as well. Now, what I've done too, is I've done the same type of analysis for America. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, you know, there's often a, a misconception that well, America doesn't pay good, uh, the stocks don't pay good dividends in America. You know, Australia is a very good dividend paying uh, country because we have not only high dividends, but we also get the franking credits. So we get some really good returns. Um, America, you don't get the franking credits, but you get some very good yield. Let me, let me prove it to you. So what I've done in UniSearch all I've done here is I've said dividend yield 4% or better. And then I said dividend safety 50 or better. So we want the safety track record. And then I said this one here, comfort index. So I went stocks, capital appreciation, CI comfort index. And I said greater than or equal to. And then here, custom value, I put 1.2. That was it, right? And then I ran the search. What is this? What is a comfort index CI 1.2? What, you know, what do you mean by that? A high CI stock, right? So if I go and I scroll across here, uh, let's see, uh, I think it's back all the way back here. 
all right you lots of parameters and again you know use them sparingly for, for for what you're wanting to achieve you don't need to go through all the parameters right in this particular instance i only need three parameters plus the sort being the fourth and if i look at the high ci stocks see they all we know they're all um 1.2 or higher but if i pick on a really higher one here 1.55 oh look at this one 1 1.7 all right i know that this is going to have a very smooth left to right profile on average look at that look at the profile up it goes why because it's got a high ci score all right something with a lower ci score like dimensional international here it's not going to be as smooth see it's a little bit more choppy still pretty good because it's a high ci score but it's not as consistent all right so what i'm going to do here same exercise again grab them it's top 20 let's see how many we got here doesn't mean we've got 20 i'm saying show the top 20 and i'll add to watch list same deal as australia i created a watch list prior to this and i'll quarantine these stocks here they go and i'll now hop over to my viewers here here, here it is and as it turns out i have got 20 so i didn't have 20 and i've put all 20 into the watch list all right now let's have a look at, at the average just to begin with so before we do any work look at the average here and I go Ooh, this is not bad uh, over the year it's gone from what uh, 17 18 odd to 24 uh, what's that six on on 18 it's gone up about 30 percent uh, earnings beautiful set of earnings the yield is picking up wow look at that and the dividends are picking up this is pretty good uh, and before we even begin uh, whittling them down a bit more but we we can always improve so how can we improve this well, let's do this. Same as what we did in Australia. Let's look for anything where there's the sell rating. All right, so if I click on REC. All right, so here we are, the REC. These three here have got sell rating. So it means that the, the share prices are starting to break down. So if I graph these given stocks, all right, start graphing them. Uh, let's, I'll put on relative timing. You can see technical starting to break down. Here it cuts below one, it keeps falling. Share price is going. Look, look at all the sell ratings popping up. All right, technicals break below one here and keep falling. Look at that, share price keeps falling, sell ratings line up. All right, so, you know, you want to be careful of these sell rated uh, companies, right? Technicals break below one here, fall, 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 fall in the share price. So I'm not going to stick around to find out what the reason is. I can always revisit them. I'm just going to remove them for now. So out they come. Okay, so I come back here. All right, so here, here are my companies. Let's go to, go to the, uh, the dividend parameters now so i'll come back uh, whoop, i'll scroll across over here here, here we go aha uh -huh. all right so here we go dividend yield safety growth ysg these are the key ones we want to look at right what yield are you paying what safety have you got what growth so before i do anything further let's see removing those three companies that were dragging our portfolio down aha uh -huh, look at that we've improved it uh, immediately look because the technicals are coming back up again all right, so we've arrested that sort of decline that we were seeing, and we're seeing a very nice trend again. All right, a little bit of choppiness, but not too bad. All right, not looking too bad. Let's, let's put on the yield. All right, here's the dividends. Let's uh, just change that and make the style jump out a bit more, and I'll change the color. All right, so, so here are the dividends. All right, there's the yield. I'll just, uh, whoop, I'll push OK. So you right click change style just the functionality in vector vest some some great tools here all right so here, there's the yield there's the dividends and uh, let's push okay and, and what where are the all important earnings wow look at those earnings and, and this is key you really need those solid earnings to drive the dividends which in turn drives yield which in turn drives the share price or the average of the all the share prices in, the, in this example here this is what we're after. Can we make it any better? Well, let's go and have a look now. So I'm going to pick on dividend growth. Why are these companies one, two, three, four? Let's say I'll click on DG and I'll sort it in ascending order. All right, four, five. Why are these five companies looking to chop back their dividends? All right. It might be a very good reason for it. It might be that these companies are looking to uh, save money, to invest into a new great project, which in turn will drive the share price and in turn give you better dividends down the track. But right now, I want dividends. 
and I'm not really interested in a company that's looking to pull them back. All right. So, but having said that, if I look, these companies looking to introduce their dividends around about what 11 to 15 percent across the board here. See, that's 409, 434, 748, 557, 457, 402. So if you chop at 15%, that's going to go, probably go below 4%. It will go below. Uh, this one will as well. That will still be above 4. That will probably just borderline hang on to 4, but this will go below 4 as well. So the, the idea being that I need 4% or better. So I'm going to take them out. All right, so I say, okay, well, that's fine. You know, I've got 20 here. I've got plenty up my sleeve. So or at least I, I had... Um, what about 17 did I and now I'm down to 12 so I still got plenty still got plenty up my sleeve I've removed any of the companies that are not going to continue to 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 meet good dividends um, if they're going to cut back it's still very good dividends but there's a threat that if they do cut make those cuts that it's going to impact me and I'm not prepared to wait around all right for that just yet all right so here they all are here the yields good okay you yeah, know, I'm looking over here. There's one or two companies, and I'm not not looking to to grow their dividends. There's a zero and a zero, and the rest are looking to grow them. So you know, there's nothing wrong with not wanting to grow a dividend if you're paying out a whopping nine and an eight. But at the same time, too, I just want to be prudent in this example. So I'm going to take those out. Right? You know, why are you not looking to to grow them? Uh, is there any issue I need to be aware of? So I'm not going to uh, wait around to find out. I'll just remove it for now. Okay, so I'm down to 10. Let's look at the watch list average. So I've just sort of whittled it down. Look at that beautiful set of earnings, great uh, dividends, great dividend yield. Look at that, the price doing what I wanted to do here. Uh, this is looking very good to me. So the last thing I'll probably do then, and that is maybe we will just have a look at that safety. Just make sure, are all of the different safety sufficient? Look at that, very good safety scores. No uh, scores there under 50, so I can't fault that. Uh, now, when I originally ran this, when, when the recording failed, I think I got it down to seven. I was probably a bit stricter. Uh, on this derivation here, I'm actually quite happy with these 10 here. Um, you know, I can't really fault that. Um, looks pretty good to me. Great earnings, great dividends. Maybe I need to tighten up on the... Um, the, the pullback here so what I could do just uh, here's a little bit of an extra here a little tweak let's uh, pick on the comfort index here we go and and actually I'll, I'll tweak it yep so CI and what's our lowest CI 1.2 is still a very good score but it, it'll mean that this company is probably the one with the, the least favorable trend at the moment so it's a bit more sort of up and down but it's still I mean, there's nothing wrong with that but i'm just being strict here so uh just to do one final iteration let's take out the bottom two all right so, so we're going to have a really good comfort index on average telling us that on average the shares are a pretty smooth left to right all right there we go we got it down to eight i think that's enough ci 1.41 phenomenal let's go have a look at our dividends um all right so uh coming across over here Dividend yield, a whopping 6.63%. You, you, you're not getting any franking credits, right? So just be mindful of that. So you, you're getting 6.63. Who's complaining, right? Really, really good. Uh, dividend safety, 59. Phenomenal. Very good. Just shy of an excellent score. It's 60, 59. Very, very good. Dividend growth, we can grow the dividends by 15% or more. Your YSG, your yield, safety and growth on a score of 0 to 2, the higher above 1, the better. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, so there we go. Uh, there we are. That really jumps out at me. All right, right click for your watch list average. Let's fire it up. Wow, great earnings, great dividends, great yield. I really like this. Phenomenal. There we are. And look at look at the trend. Look at the trend. That's a really nice trend. Uh, you know, certainly from this point onwards here, because we're looking at present mode here. One year, nineteen days. Right now, this is what we're looking at. Those are the ones that jump out. 4% or better, American stocks. Superb. You might want to jot those down, see what you think of them using the VectorVest system. All right, so in wrapping up today, what I've got here, I've got a special slide set here. 
all the key details. Let's bring it up. Here we go. All right. So if you like what you saw today, you can always take it a trial. And I've got the special link here. We've used it with the Australian Shareholders Association to give uh, the Australian Shareholders Association uh, members there a special price. I'm really happy to offer it to you, uh, the attendee or those watching the recording today. Uh, we'll keep it open uh, for you. Uh, you. If you hop along to www.vectorvest.com.au forward slash ASA and you can trial out Vectorvest for 30 days. All right, so I'll just uh, bring that uh, link up uh, for a grand total of 99 US cents. All right, I'm sorry, bear with me. I'm just uh, going to load up that link. So www.vectorvest.com.au forward slash ASA. Once you put it in, don't worry, it automatically reverts. There's a longer link, just use that link and it then reverts. 99 US cents, I call it $1.40 Australian dollars for 30 days. Then what we'll also give you in here, you'll get um, invited to the invitation to weekly Q&A sessions. We've got one this Friday. We, we'll invite you to our live events. We've got our online investment club that takes place each month, which is brilliant. And we'll also then give you the three most impressive dividend payers since 2012 report. A lot of work and time went into that. So if you want to know some of the best dividend payers in Australia that have really ticked a lot of boxes over the years, uh, then uh, I, I'll get, get you access to this brilliant report. Okay, so that's all part of it there. Uh, in addition, uh, we're on and you, you, uh, you don't have to, there's no subscription to get access to this. Uh, it's free to everybody. Uh, let's go to YouTube. Whoops, dub, dub, dub. I'm going to just bring this up uh, on the other screen now. Just bear with me. I'll just type it in and I'll bring it across. Vectorverse Australia. Yeah, right, here we go. That's what I wanted. All right, so Vectorverse Australia. And if I click on Vectorverse Australia and uh, click, click on the videos here, uh, so go to YouTube, type in Vectorverse Australia, you can't miss us. We're on there. We've got 935 followers so far. If you like us, follow us. Nearly at a thousand now. And uh, yeah, you, you, you'll find uh, some great stuff on here. And you'll see in recent times here, uh, we, we, we've done a lot of stuff in recent times on dividends, how to find the best dividend paying stocks in the best paying, I think, industries and sectors that talk was on. Uh, that's one you might want to check out. Uh, earnings, dividends, and share prices are unmistakable facts. That's a correlation between dividends and earnings, and I've given plenty of examples in that talk. Um, uh, and again, uh, hottest industries or the hottest stocks. There's just some brilliant uh, content on here. You know, build a brilliant watch list. You know, four Australian retailers under the spotlight. Mining stocks are booming. Lithium stocks, agricultural stocks, dividend kings. That's a really interesting uh, presentation. That one there. REITs, retail, uh, real estate investment trusts. Uh, you know, it's just there's lots of different uh, uh, content on there. So uh, we're on YouTube. We're also on Facebook. You can look us up on Facebook. So we're out there. If you are new to VectVest and you take out a trial today, use that link. Uh, where is it? Uh, hang on, I haven't put it on there. So oh, hang on, I have. There we are. I thought I didn't see it. www.vectvest.com.au forward slash ASA. You can trial us out for, for 99 cents for 30 days using that special link. Call us up on the toll-free number and email me through as well, should you choose, right? And I can always call you back if you want to email me as well. All right, so I hope you got a lot out of it. Use the power of UniSearch. Just on the questions there, I, I know there were a few of you, uh, when, when I initially ran the first, uh, first presentation, this is the recording version, uh, to make sure you didn't miss out. Uh, a few of you had asked to go back to the to the uni search right so for australia those were the uni search parameters all right so you might just want to take a screenshot of it if you take it a trial call up our support team say look help me out just build this search for me save it for me and show me how to access it every day and the team will do it for you and then you don't even have to worry anymore about doing this it's there for you and you just run the search and run through the techniques that i've shown you all right so there there it is for australia a few more lines because I wanted to make sure that there were franking credits. And a lot of the analysis work went in for Australian stocks because this presentation is primarily for the Australian stocks today. For those of you that uh, want to see it in the US, it was uh, a bit simpler because I didn't have to look for the uh, franking credits. 
And because we've got so many stocks in America, it's very easy to, to find uh, um, you know, the, the 4% or better yielding stocks that have some, some really good fundamentals. Okay, so um, here they are. And uh, that's the parameter set. And these are the ones that I found. All right, so in terms of the watch lists, so just uh, what the final sweep on the watch lists for Australia, they're the seven I got it down to. Brilliant, right? 4% or better, fully franked. How, how easy was it using VectorBest? Um, and then for America, same deal. Coming to the watch list, I got eight. And those are the ones, another eight brilliant stocks there. And again, you know, just to be clear, I cannot advise you whether this is suitable for you or not. I can't advise you personally, but using the power of the VectorVest system, uh, it made it easy to, to, to find those stocks that met that very strict criteria. The rest is up to, up to you as to whether it's suitable for you or not. All right, that's the power of the VectorVest tools. It makes it easy for you, right? So there it is. And those are the ones there. All right, so you might just want to jot those down. Let's jump to the, the slide set there. You can go back and watch the recording as well and pause if required. Uh, where can I fit myself in? There we are. <laughs> uh, thanks again for, uh, for watching the recording. Hope you got a lot out of it. Email me through russellmarkvectorvest.com. Email us at support at vectorvest.com. Or you can also contact our toll-free number. In addition, uh, uh, make sure if you want to take out that trial, take it out for 99 cents per that link, vectorvest.com.au forward slash ASA. Thanks again. I hope you got a lot out of it. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.